Hi and welcome. During the next few minutes I'd like to um, talk about a, f about a feature which uh, is probably not well known um, to most users of XFROG 3.5. Um, this, this feature is called a separator and you can find it uh, in several components like the tree component or the leaf component. I think it's best to create a simple example so I'll add a tree component, drag a leaf component on top, be sure that the link is set to multiple, then select the leaf component, go for the basic tab and increase the scale of the leaf. So this is the result. And if you now hop over to the primitive, primitive tab of the leaf component, you can see that we have the separator option over here. Now, when turning this option on and off and on and off, there is not much going on on the screen and that's the reason why many users abandon this um, option uh, right away. But if you take a closer look in this area, you can see that something um, changes about the shading. It's just a little change, but there is something happening. And if you take a look at the poly count over here with the se separator turned off the polygon count is uh, about 325 and now turning the separator on the polygon count goes down to 285 so something about the ge geometry must have changed but we couldn't see a change so far now with the leaf still selected go to the basic tab and move the leaf slightly outwards. I'm using translation Z about um, two. Go back to the primitive tab. You can see at the moment uh, the separator is turned on. By default, the separator is turned off. And now you can see that we have a uh, physical connection between our tree component and between the leaf component. And the separator is an option to turn this on or off this connection. <laughs> so if you turn the separator on, then the leaf is separated from the trunk. If you let it off, then the leaf is connected with a simple, really simple connection to the tree component. When turning on the wireframe shading, you can see that this um, well, connection is really uh, super simple actually. And in many cases, um, well, it won't help much. Especially when working with uh, opacity mapped leaf um, textures on uh, your leaf component, you might want to remove uh, this um, automatic connection between tree and leaf. Um, simply take a look what happens. I'll uh, hop over to the Material tab, set the texture, browse for a file. You can see I'll probably um, use Emission to make this one brighter. So now you can see the bitmap and it is uh, placed on uh, our leaf geometry but the bitmap is distorted to a certain degree this is probably uh, best visible uh, when taking a look at this area this is because um, the bitmap is of course of a square shape or a rectangular shape and the leaf geometry in, 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 in contrast is uh, well um, shaped uh, like like an egg probably. So when using bitmap based textures in most cases you'll activate shape spline and use a rectangular shape. This minimizes the distortions that can occur um, when using a bitmap. Now you can see that the bitmap is displayed just fine. But of course, we now have our um, connection between a tree and leaf. And when increasing the width at the base of our 
leaf component, this um, connection really gets huge and is, well, totally unnecessary in our case. Apart from that, in most cases, users probably will um, leave translation Z set to zero. So the leaf has a connection to the trunk in any case. But now we have an ugly artifact uh, at the base of the leaf, which is uh, coming from um, the connection between those two components. And as I said, this connection is turned on by default because by default for the leaf component the separator is turned off. So to avoid those artifacts and to reduce the polygon count remember to turn the separator on. I'll turn the wireframe off for now and now you can see the artifacts that appear when you turn the separator off. So this was the separator option for the leaf component, but other components also um, have this option. So now we'll take a look at uh, two tree components that are connected to each other. Again, I'll select the child object, go for the basic tab, and move it slightly outwards. So now you can see um, in contrast to the leaf component here we don't have a physical connection between the parent and the child objects. This is because by default the separator is turned on for the tree component. For the leaf component it's the other way around. If we turn the separator off you can see that a um, connection is generated. Again, um, well, um, in, in most cases I, I, I would say this connection is not really useful and uh, in most cases probably uh, you don't move the branch outwards so it's better to let this option turn on. But there are some scenarios uh, where the separator feature turned off can be really helpful. Um, for now I like to um, work on the primitive of those tree components. I'll increase the number of points and also increase the radius. I'll do the same for the child object. Good. And now we'll set this link to simple. This means the second tree component is placed on top of the first one. Um, if you have watched some of those uh, earlier video tutorials I've created, uh, then you'll know that you have to increase uh, the shape parameter at first. Uh, we'll turn off the top and then we still have to increase the growth scale and I'll also adjust the dense um, parameter. So now uh, those two components are placed on top of each other. I'll increase um, the shape at the base to 100%. So now they uh, fit on top of each other. Now let's say you want to uh, use a more irregular shape uh, for the profile. Go to the primitive tab. Um, we could use the displace feature for example. Uh, it's set to random by default. I'll increase those values and now you can see that the surface is displaced. And you'll also notice that now those two components don't have a, a good connection anymore. And now we can make use of the separator feature. First of all, let me move the upper component a bit upwards. You can see we have a small gap. Now go to the primitive tab of the child 
tree component, turn off the separator, and now you can see that we have a physical connection between those two components. So in this case, the, this automatic connection between two components is really helpful. It's a little bit twisted. I think we can see that better, yes, uh, if we turn on um, the wireframe. But we can remove the twist um, with the upper tree component still selected. We are on the primitive tab. I just rotate the primitive of this upper component about 90 degrees and now those fit better and uh, we have a clean connection between the lower component and between the upper component. So if you know how to use the separator feature then it can be really helpful. In some other cases it simply will produce unneeded geometry but in this case, for example, I think it's a really good solution to connect two um, tree components. And finally, I'd like to show you another feature that many users don't know of. Um, again, it's uh, related to the separator. We don't need uh, the tree at this stage. We'll need it later on. Now we will create uh, some root flares uh, for this tree component. A lot of people say that XFrog is not able to create roots. Well, that's of course not true. You simply can take a tree component and let it grow in uh, the other direction, downwards, and create a branching structure beneath the ground. But now I'd like to show you a different approach to create, um, well, some root flares. Um, this is uh, especially helpful because in many cases you don't need a complete branching structure um, beneath the ground. You just want to have, uh, well, a hint of roots at the base of the tree. Therefore, we'll use the simple component. Drag it on top of the camera. Select the simple and go for the primitive tab. Set the primitive type to tube. This is the same primitive type that we are using uh, in our tree components for example. We will use 12 points for now. For our profile, I'll scale the profile up to about uh, 3. You'll notice that nothing is happening here on screen, but we'll come to that later on. And now I'll turn profile on. This gives us this new edit button and now we can work on the profile. It's some sort of spline. I'll just move around some of those points. That's okay. So, as I already mentioned, there's nothing uh, happening on screen right now. This is because um, the simple alone does not create geometry. But now do a, um, a copy of this object. Make it child object. Now select the child. Go to the basic tab and move it slightly upwards. Now you can see we have geometry. And this geometry is actually showing the profile that we just edited. So just by connecting those two simple components, we are able to create new geometry. Now go for the primitive tab of the second simple component. I'll reduce the scale to about 2.5. Oops, I should have used a proportional scaling for that one too. Good. So now for the child, uh, let's go with 2.2. Again, we can go for edit profile, move around some of those points, do another copy, drag it on top so that this will be our third child object. In this case, we don't have to uh, move it anymore because um, it's using 
this translation Z setting already. You can see this by hiding. We just placed it on top with a um, transform or translation setting of 1. Again, we can go for the profile, move around some points, and we could continue um, click copy again you can see we placed another row of polygons on top work on the profile I'm reducing the diameter at least slightly and last but not least now I'll take the tree component put it on top now we use 12 points for our profiles down here, so I'll use the same number over here. Now we need to move this tree slightly upwards. Again, you can see we have a gap. So go over to primitive, turn the separator off. And if you've got a twist in your geometry, you can go down, rotation Z, until you have clean geometry. So with help of the simple component and the primitive type set to tube and the separator turned off, you can create complex geometry and this technique can help to create some root flares uh, for trees. Of course You'll notice that this is a really uh, rough approach right here but if you're using a few more um, of those simple components you can create smoother transitions if we now add some uh, random displacement to um, the tree on top then you can see that we have uh, a nice gnarly surface And at the base, we have some sort of root flares. This is a technique not many users know of inside Xrock 3.5. So I hope you consider this helpful and I'm sure you are able to use this technique and create some unique um, trees and trunks. And I'm sure that those will look far more interesting compared to a tree looking um, looking similar to the default tree even uh, when using um, the random displacement it's hardly possible to create such an interesting shape um, with uh, just one tree component but with help of the simple primitive approach you are able to create a far more complex shape for the root flares so thanks for watching and happy rendering